Hello and welcome to the last part of this lecture. In this part, we will cover the method of usability user testing. Before we move into the method of usability user testing, I wanted to add some notes about inspection methods which apply to both cognitive walkthrough and heuristic evaluation. So you can perform, and sometimes it's necessary to perform an expert evaluation or an expert review, uh, heuristic evaluation or cognitive walkthrough, prior to conducting a user study to identify ma major problems and redesign them. That will help you save some time. Then we have the issue or the consideration of the double experts. So having evaluators who are experts in both human-computer interaction, usability evaluation, that is, uh, as well as a specific domain of the application that it is being exa examined, will yield the best insights. Uh, the inspection methods were reviewed in the previous part, and that is both the cognitive walkthrough and heuristic evaluation uh, do not actually replace uh, user testing with actual users. And using multiple evaluators, as we've seen, uh, is best. Each evaluator is only uncovering some of the usability problems, often around 30% of more obvious issues. So having multiple evaluators inspecting the interface is recommended. So what is usability user testing? Usability testing refers to evaluating a product or, survey or service by testing it with real representative users. Typically during a test, participants will try to complete a set of typical tasks while observers watch, listen, take notes. The goal is to identify usability problems, qual collect qualitative and quantitative data, and determine the participant's satisfaction with the product. Um, so, the method of usability user testing enables understanding what features co cause confusion, uh, where the users encounter problems, but also how they are trying to overcome, overcome them in order to complete the tasks that are given to them. The first usability test took place in 1970 at Bell Laboratories uh, with the purpose of evaluating business information systems, but the method became particularly popular after uh, the World Wide Web was invented. There was a lot of usability user testing that took place within the context of uh, the World Wide Web in order to bring it to its current state. So the process of usability user testing involves the following steps. First, you need to plan for your testing, and that is understanding and deciding why do you need to test with real users, who are your users, and that will help you subsequently recruit a representative sample of participants, what specific features or parts of the application you will test, what kind of data you need and you want to collect. You have to design carefully the tasks you will give to your participants and pilot them to ensure that um, in the pilot uh, testing, people can understand them and that they are also realistic and representative for the system tasks. You will then need to develop your usability user uh, testing protocol, which includes, of course, the decisions that you have taken in the first and the second uh, steps. Uh, here, you need to consider and, the, and develop your consent forms, any pre-test or post-test questionnaires, interview templates, and so on. In the fourth step, you need to identify and invite your participants. And when the test uh, happens, you start by welcoming your participants individually. Um, you have to explain to them, this is very important, that they are not the ones that they are being tested, but the system is being tested. You have to ask them to think out loud uh, so that you can audio record the session and you can also take notes. Uh, you observe them and you collect your data while they complete the tasks that you give them. Um, you finish the experiment and ask them to fill in any post-test questionnaires or interview them to get a better understanding of the experience. And finally, you finish uh, by thanking them. Uh, of course, you need to repeat uh, steps five to seven for each one of your participants uh, while you collect and finally analyze your data. It is very important to remember <coughs> that the usability user testing protocol does not include uh, the observer intervening or helping the users. If participants cannot complete the task and ask you questions, uh, you can kindly um, ask them to move to the next task and that you will help them at the end of the session. 
Remember that usability testing is about understanding why the users cannot perform specific tasks. It, it is not a help session. This will eventually help you improve your design or training materials so that users in the future can perform the tasks easily and without your help. Um, you need to recruit a representative sample of uh, users to evaluate your application, as we, as I explained before. And an important consideration refers to the total number of people that you need to recruit to get a good understanding of system usability. You might think that the more participants you recruit, the better the testing will be in terms of covering usability problems. But that is that also means that it will cost you more, as it is hard to find participants who will commit to the testing. But it is equally hard to understand analyze the data that you will gather. So Nielsen and LaDroyer uh, have researched th this question and they propose that testing with five users gives you enough insight uh, to the most usability problems. After testing with the nine, like, or nine to 12 users, the, the results become repetitive, so you don't get any new insight. It is also very important for usability user testing sessions to use to go through the informed consent process of explaining the experiment to your participants, acknowledge that if, if it may cause any distress, how the data will be used, especially any private confidential information, other implications, and inform them that, of course, they have the right to withdraw at any part uh, during the experiment. Uh, on the slide notes here, I have added um, um, a website where you can find templates that you can use uh, for like consent forms and similar materials. Um, you might wonder how many tasks you it is acceptable to provide in a usability user testing session. This uh, really depends on how long each task will take to complete, as it is not recommended your experiment to be any longer than one hour in duration. Of course, tasks should be representative of what the application is supposed to do. Uh, that means that you should not ask users to perform an action that it is not currently supported by uh, the current uh, design. Uh, each task may have several subtasks. For example, you might want to ask as a main task the user to complete a specific action, while in the subtask you might you might um, ask them about the look and feel, or the look and feel of that page screen, or their usability um, observations, and so on. Um, usually, you can design your tasks to start easy and then move on to harder. Um, tasks, or you can randomize your tasks. But this is especially important if you want to study a uh, learning effect. If the time to complete a task matters, uh, then you need to set time limits to uh, each task. And that is why it's important also to pilot uh, your tasks before the actual experiment. In a usability user testing session, you will collect both qualitative and quantitative data. Qualitative data comes from observations and the audio recordings from the Think Aloud protocol, which I will explain in the next slide, from pre- and post-test questionnaires and interview data or other user comments. While quantitative data comes from questionnaires, success rates, which I'm going to also discuss and explain what it is in one of the next slides, task completion times, uh, and you can also uh, gather quantitative information, such as number of errors a user makes when trying to accomplish a task, the number of clicks, and similar metrics. So what is the Think Aloud protocol? To collect Think Aloud data, you need to ask participants to use the system while continuously they are thinking out loud. This is uh, simply verbalizing their thoughts as they move through the user interface. There are lots of benefits in using the method. Uh, it is cheap. You don't need any special equipment. It is robust. Uh, it is flexible. You can use it at any stage in the development life cycle. It is convincing and it is uh, easy to learn and apply. On the downside, it creates a sort of an unnatural situation. Um, as most people don't sit and talk to themselves all day, um, which makes it hard for test participants to keep up the required monologue. Um, it can provide some, can give you some filter statements, 
um, users are supposed to be saying things as they come to their minds. However, people, because they want to appear smart and so on, they might um, filter and process the kind of like thinking process and the comments that they are expressing. Um, and can be biased user behavior, uh, prompts and clarifying questions are usually necessary, but from an untrained facilitator, such interruptions can very easily change the user behavior. So what is a success rate? A success rate gives you an overview of the percentage of tasks that users complete, com complete correctly. Uh, it doesn't explain why people fail to complete the task, but it just tells you um, the usability uh, score of that particular application. To calculate it, you need to use the formula on your slide. And also on that uh, link here, you can find more information about the success rate, how it is used, and why usually the majority of the websites score that less than 50%. So usability user testing has its advantages and disadvantages. On the plus side, you can using the method, you can understand people's real problems, people's thinking and thoughts as they occur. And from that, you can elicit real-time user feedback and people's suggestions for actual fixes. Of course, the method is highly relevant to the specific context that the method is being applied. It can be combined with other methods to get in-depth inside. For example, you can do short interviews at the end of the usability testing session. On the downside, it is time consuming to identify participants, to run experiments, and to analyze the think aloud data. It is very important that you cannot interrupt the users to discuss what they think or to answer their questions. The setting in a usability lab, as we as I explained before, can be quite unnatural for the user, um, which may also lead them to not thinking out loud. Uh, which means that you have to remind and pushing your people to verbalize their thoughts. Experience is needed or appropriate skills to design a, a good usability testing experiment, and it needs the method needs practice. 